In this video, I'm going to talk about how to interpret numbers, how to interpret your CVP value, your art line value, and if you have a pulmonary arterial catheter, how to look at that number too. I got a request on explaining CVP and art line and how those values or waveforms might change with COPD or AFib. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about how to figure out what the numbers are telling you and where the problem is. So here we have normal blood flow through the heart. We've got our vena cava here. Blood comes in through the right atria, right ventricle, out to the lungs, to the left atria, left ventricle, and then out to the aorta. So here in the aorta, we would get our art line. And that'll give you a waveform. in addition to a systolic and a diastolic value, and a map. Here in our superior vena cava, we would get our CVP reading. And that one can tell you your fluid status. And if you watch the CVP video, um, I give you the mnemonic that CVP could stand for Consider Volume Problem. So it tells you sort of your fluid status. And we'll talk about a little bit more that it can tell you. Here in your pulmonary artery, if you had a swan GANS catheter, you could figure out what your pulmonary pressures are. So normally a pulmonary artery pressure would be quarters over, over dimes, so about systolic of 25, diastolic of 10. With your art line, you'd want a normal blood pressure 120 over 80 with a MAP greater than 65. And your CVP, a normal CVP, would be somewhere between 2 to 6, depending on what else is going on. If they're vented, it might be a little bit higher. So now let's talk through these numbers and what they might mean if you have COPD. So I always try to think through these problems in terms of where is the blockage, where is the blood getting stuck. So first we'll talk about COPD. And with COPD you have pulmonary congestion. So you have congestion here and so you're going to have increased pulmonary pressure. So something greater than 25 over 10. So the easiest way to remember it is just to remember that any kind of pulmonary condition will increase pulmonary pressures, um, will increase your pulmonary artery pressure, and probably cause pulmonary congestion, which is resulting in that pink frothy sputum that's characteristic of um, pulmonary failure relating to heart failure. However, the actual physiology behind that is actually really interesting, so I want to point it out just briefly. Um, the normal physiological reflex of your lungs is to cause pulmonary vasoconstriction if there's any kind of alveolar hypoxia. So this works really great when you have pneumonia. So let's say you have pneumonia in this part of your lung. Your body is going to sense the decreased oxygen in that part of your lung, and so it's going to decrease blood flow by pulmonary vasoconstriction to that part of your lung, but it's going to vasodilate, or at least not vasoconstrict, and so it's going to shunt blood to the healthy portions of your lungs. So in the case of pneumonia, this is really helpful because there's no point in perfusing the parts of your lung that are not oxygenating and are just shunting blood. Another example of when this might be helpful is when you have only one lung. So if you have only one lung, we'll say this lung has been removed, there's no point in perfusing both lungs equally. So your body senses the decreased oxygenation in the absent lung, and so it vasoconstricts those vessels and shunts blood to the healthy lung that can oxygenate this reflex becomes less helpful when you have global pulmonary hypoxia. 
So like COPD or sleep apnea. Because with COPD or sleep apnea, you have decreased oxygenation all over in both lungs. And so your body's compensatory mechanism says, well, there's not enough oxygen in this part of the lung, I'm going to vasoconstrict. But it ends up vasoconstricting everywhere because there's no oxygen anywhere in the lungs. And so as a result, you get pulmonary hypertension due to global pulmonary vasoconstriction. So that's what we're talking about now, COPD. So the easy way to remember it is if you have a lung condition, you'll have increased pulmonary pressure, increased pulmonary congestion, but the real reason is because you've got decreased oxygenation, and so you've got pulmonary vasoconstriction, you've got increased pulmonary pressure, and so you get backup. So the right ventricle becomes incompetent to pump blood against this high pulmonary hypertension. And so you get right ventricular failure. So you get increased right ventricular pressure, and eventually your right ventricle will fail. I like to say it becomes like a bro, like it becomes big and buff and stupid. So it has increased pressure it needs to push against, and so it says, I'm going to get stronger to push against it, but it really just hypertrophies and makes the problem worse. So it gets like a bro, big, buff, and stupid, and works even less efficiently. So right ventricular pressure increases, and so that pressure backs up here into your vena cava, and you've got increased fluid in your vena cava, so increased pressure in your vena cava, so your CVP will increase. So your CVP will be greater than eight. So if you're looking at someone who has COPD, their, CO, their CVP will be high, their right ventricle will be hypertrophied, pumping against high pulmonary pressure. So that if you have a swan, your pulmonary pressures will be high. But that blood isn't getting through to your left ventricle. So you've got high pressure here, you've got high pressure here, it's pumping against high pressure, but this ventricle can't pump through the lungs very well because they're very vasoconstricted. And so you have only a little bit of blood returning to the left side of your heart and only a little bit of blood exiting your heart. And so your blood pressure is going to be low. Your MAP is going to be less than 65 if you've got very severe pulmonary congestion. So when you look at the picture, you say, where are things getting stuck? We've got high pressure in your vena cava, high pressure in your ventricle, high pressure in your lungs. So that's where it's getting stuck, and then low pressure after the blockage. So I hope that helps you put together the whole picture of what you're looking at when you look at CVP, your art line, and your pulmonary catheter, if you have it, in a patient with COPD. So I'll make another video um, on what happens when you have an MI or you have myocardial ischemia in your right ventricle versus your left ventricle and that, how that will affect your CBP, your art line, and your pulmonary catheter values.